Yo, what's up, everybody? I know, I know, I know. I did not go live yesterday, Monday, Music Monday, but I was not feeling it. Um, but I do have a live stream prepared for you guys today. And I have some rants that I want to rant and rave about as well. Now, I'm going to let y'all know this right now before I even get this video even started. I am going to be talking about Drizzy Drake and all the rappers. I'm going to be talking about my favorite Drake albums. A lot of this live stream is going to be dedicated to Drake because I just feel like, you know, with what's going on right now in the music business with all these rappers coming at Drake is lame. Lame. Let me get some more lights. I know I'm dark. Uh, but yes, it's all lame. I don't like it. I'm not feeling it. But I just wanted to give my personal opinion on it. And then also we're going to talk about JoJo Siwa and why I personally don't listen to Kendrick or J. Cole. And it's not because of any beef. It's not because I'm siding with anybody. It's because I personally just don't listen to those guys. It's not a like, it's nothing personal. I just never listened to them. So, yes, that's what we're going to be doing today. Let me get myself prepared. Um, of course, got to get everything good. So, um, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel right now. And uh, like this video. Let me get myself together. The Hitchhiker's Guide to Releasing Music Business course is geared to show you exactly how to register, release, and promote your music. All you guys have to do is head over to registermysongs.com, sign up for our course, create your account, and log in so that you can keep track of your progress. We currently have 15 lessons ranging from how to split your song, how to get song placements and booking shows. Make sure you click the link in the description and sign up for the Hitchhiker's Guide to Releasing Music course. The Hitchhiker's Guide to Releasing Music business course is geared to show you exactly how to register, release, and promote your music. All you guys have to do is head over to registermysongs.com, sign up for our course, create your account, and log in so that you can keep track of your progress. We currently have 15 lessons ranging from how to split your song, how to get song placements, and booking shows. Make sure you click the link in the description and sign up for the Hitchhiker's Guide to Releasing Music course. The Hitchhiker's Guide to Releasing Music business course is geared to show you exactly how to register, release, and promote your music. All you guys have to do is head over to registermysongs.com, sign up for our course, create your account, and log in so that you can keep track of your progress. We currently have 15 lessons ranging from how to split your song, how to get song placements, and booking shows. Make sure you click the link in the description and sign up for the Hitchhiker's Guide to Releasing Music course. The Hitchhiker's Guide to Releasing Music business course is geared to show you exactly how to register, release, and promote your music. All you guys have to do is head over to registermysongs.com, sign up for our course, create your account, and log in so that you can keep track of your progress. We currently have 15 lessons ranging from how to split your song, how to get song placements, and booking shows. Make sure you click the link in the description and sign up for the Hitchhiker's Guide to Releasing Music. Alright, I am back as promised. And we got three topics for our rants today, okay? Three topics for the rant. So, again, I'm going to be talking about JoJo Siwa. I don't know if y'all know who JoJo Siwa is, but she's like this person, uh, like, let me go pull her up. All right. And I'm really, 
I'm really only doing this video for like the YouTube community world, right? So there's this girl, her name is Jojo Siwa. Jojo Siwa is a entertainer. Um, I don't know anything about Jojo Siwa. Um, personally, I don't know much about her. So over the last couple of weeks, or I would say days, I've been learning more about who she is and what her brand is. And what I, what I have come to realize is that her claim to fame started when she was about nine years old. And when she was nine, she got on a show called Dance Moms. And the Dance Moms show, hold on, gave her, there she go on the show. But the Dance Moms show basically gave her so much fame uh, and notoriety in the community where there were a bunch of kids. So needless to say, her fan base is kids. I would say in the, the, the largest age in her fan base, in my personal opinion, would be like eight or nine. So again, she started on Dance Moms. That's where she built her fan base at. And so fast forward, she's now 20 and she's trying to take a new approach to her business. Now, personally, for me, I think this is not a good idea the way that they're doing it because they're trying to force this new image on us. Okay, we're having fire alarms and they would go off at 1.17 while I'm live. <laughs> I'll be back after the fire alarms, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. The Hitchhiker's Guide to Releasing Music Business course is geared to show you exactly how to register, release, and promote your music. All you guys have to do is head over to registermysongs.com, sign up for our course, create your account, and log in so that you can keep track of your progress. We currently have 15 lessons ranging from how to split your song, how to get song placements, and booking shows. Make sure you click the link in the description and sign up for the Hitchhiker's Guide to Releasing Music course. The Hitchhiker's I don't even know why I turned it off because I left the mic on. Y'all can hear everything. I'm so whack. But it stopped. Anyways, so back to Jojo Siwa. So she starts to create a new image for herself. This is the new image that she started to create for herself. This edgy, she looks like, uh, what's the rap group? Kiss. There's a group called Kiss. That's what she looks like. Uh, uh, hold on. She looks like there's another uh there's another uh guy that they said that she looked like as well. Um Gene Simmons. That's who she that's what they said. They said she was looking like Gene Simmons with her look um that she's going for right now, right? That look. And um the reason why I personally think this is not a good marketing strategy or a good way to transition her from being a kid child star to an adult child star is because essentially she has to start from scratch. She has to start from scratch because all of her fans are little kids. And this is not what the little kids want to see. And so she hasn't realized that the people that she needs to be start targeting, we don't want to see this either. This isn't cool. Like, we're not listening to Gene Simmons. Like, this is not, this is not cool in 2024. So I understand she's trying to make a drastic change and a drastic switch, but she's kind of totally disconnected to the fact that this, this isn't it either. So then you take the look. And then you also take the music as well. So I'm going to go on her Spotify page. 
This is the look on her Spotify page. I'm not going to play any of her music because obviously I want to get flagged. But everything is colorful. Everything is bright. This is the music. This is the look. Who's listening to this music? Children. So now she's deciding that she doesn't want to promote to children anymore. Well, who are you promoting to? And that's what I feel like her team is missing or whoever's behind her. They're missing, okay, now who are we promoting to? Because you're not promoting to people who like Gene Simmons. That's just not who you are. Now she also come out as a lesbian. So now she is trying to battle a identity crisis in the public and then also her identity crisis behind closed doors going from being, you know, straight to now you're out and you're open and you are... You know what I'm saying? Comfortable with your sexuality. And that's good for her. Uh, but if she is going to transition into an adult star, she still has to have a certain level of cool factor. So a lot of the pictures and stuff that I've been seeing her dressing up, like she got all these chains around her neck and she's looking like she wants to be in a rap video. That contradicts everything that she was doing before and then also it's not cool it doesn't look cool like somebody needs to tell her that what she's doing is is it's kind of lame in a sense it's kind of lame and it's like like this right here like looking like the tiger king that's kind of lame her dressed up with this big old gold chain and it's just it's not giving what she wanted to give she needs to get with some people um who she needs to get with some people who understand the importance of transitioning child stars into adult stars because the the way that she going about it is 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 corny it's very very corny and she's a boss like I, I watched the interview with her. She did an interview on a show called Car Her Daddy. And I'm not gonna lie, Jojo CY is a boss. Like she has built an, an empire over there with her brand and a lot of people say she's not talented uh you can say whatever you want to say about her but she built a brand and what is happening now is her brand is going from being a she wants her brand to go from being a kid brand to now I'm an adult look at me as an adult so what she's struggling with is she's always been doing everything on her own right and Everything that you've seen from her previously with all of the colors and the bright things that she's been doing, that's been all her ideas. JoJo has never been an adult before. So now she needs to understand that she has to start taking advice from adults when it comes to her look, when it comes to her sound, and when it comes to the different moves that she makes because she's going to make the music and pick the outfits from a childlike mindset because she's never been an adult. Everything that she's doing, she's doing it saying, okay, I'm making this decision because I'm an adult now. But because she's never been an adult, she doesn't realize that the decisions that she's making still come off as very childish. What she's dressed up here, this looks very childish. This doesn't look like somebody who's trying to, you know, give themselves a different image. This looks very childish. Even when she went on uh, JoJo, uh, she went on her, Call Her Daddy. She uh, she had this hat on while she was on the Call Her Daddy show. If you see the hat, it's got like these things just hanging from the hat, just swinging. That's right. That's hella childish. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get that you're trying to like be cool, but you're in an interview and the hat is distracting. It's super childish. Like you're trying to, here's the hat right here. Like I get it. You're trying to. You know what I'm saying? Make a moment for yourself. But that hat is mad, is mad childish. It's corny. It doesn't look good. It's distracting in an interview. If you're just on the red carpet and you're taking pictures, it is what it is. It's still going to be childish. But you're in an interview, and this is childish. So, again, she just needs to get with some people to start helping her make some decisions, even though the fact that she's been making all the decisions on her own up until this point. Uh, but, yeah, good luck to JoJo CY, man. Uh, I just got... 
I just started watching the things that she was doing because everything started coming across my news feed, probably because she's gay. I'm gay. Now she's showing up. But I'm definitely not her target audience because the music that she's making, again, is still childish. The way she's dressing, the way she's putting herself out there is all childish. I'm in my 30s. It doesn't work for me. So I'm off it. Um, I'm going to let the JoJo just see why topic died down for now. But let's talk about Kendrick, J. Cole, Drake versus everybody. So let's go, let's pull these both these guys up. Kendrick Lamar. Let's pull up Kendrick and let's pull up J. Cole. All right. So if we did some research about J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, and also Drake, of course, let me pull up Drake. We got to get Drake in the mix. So Drake is 37, Kendrick is 36, and J. Cole is 39. So J. Cole is the oldest one out of all of them. They all debuted at the same time. So if we look, Kendrick, uh, J. Cole's album, Born Center. So I'm not going to talk about the warm-up or the come-up or all them other shits. We're going to go straight to, uh, uh, not Born Center, but Cold World, the sideline story. Let's go right to that one. Uh, Cole's first album that I ever heard of was... Cold World, The Sideline Story. I was not listening to J. Cole at all. I wasn't interested in J. Cole. J. Cole wasn't speaking to me, speaking from my perspective at all, right? J. Cole dropped Born Center. That was the first time I had ever listened to a J. Cole album. Um, my life in... Hold on, let me see if this is the right one. Let me see. Let's go to J. Cole on Spotify. <laughs> Born Center. Mr. J. Cole. Mr. So here is, man, make that shit small. Make that shit small, bitch ass nigga. Yo, I don't like how they doing this. Why they doing you like this, J. Cole? Why they doing that? All right, so here's the album right here that I used to listen to. When I was 2013... What was my life at in 2013? So, I remember in 2013, um, let's see. In 2013, I was working as a produce inspector at a Giant. Giant is a grocery store. And in 2013, I heard this album and I used to listen to this album when I was at work and I would turn it on and I would just let it play through but I was never really a fan of J. Cole I just really liked this album I thought this was a really really good album and I needed something to listen to while I was at work because I worked overnight and I literally just inspected produce all day I mean, all night um, in the grocery store. And so I listened to this album because it was super long and it was good. But I, again, I was never a fan of J. Cole. After this album, I don't think I ever listened to another J. Cole project. And the reason being is because nothing he did ever got me interested enough to listen to his music. What gravitated me to this Born Center album was actually the song with Miguel, Power Trip, 
And then he had another song. Uh, what's this? Yeah, it was the Power Trip song. Hold on, let me make sure. I don't want to play it out loud. But it's definitely the Power Trip song. The Power Trip song is the song that led me to this album. Um, he has a song. Is it a good thing? I don't know if I'm going to see you again. I don't know what album that song is on. Is it a real thing? But that's, I like that song. So J. Cole has like two songs. He has this Power Trip song right here that I really, really like. That's what led me to this album. Because I was a fan of Miguel. And so if you're a fan of Miguel and he drops a song with J. Cole, now you're listening to J. Cole. So that's what brought me to this album right here. But uh, I never listened to anything else. Now. Let's talk about Kendrick Lamar, because I told somebody on Instagram that I never listened to Kendrick Lamar, and this dude is going to tell me, Cap, I do not listen to Kendrick Lamar. I cannot tell you one Kendrick Lamar song or, or album title except for the one where you say, I got a swimming pool full of liquor and I dive in it. I know that song right there. And then he got a song where he be like, uh, uh, I think it's got Rihanna on it. Let me go find the song. Let me go find the song. And this is no disrespect to Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar fans, but it's this one right here. Hold on, hold on. This is the other song. This song right here says, so it's not Rihanna. It's somebody named Zakari. So Kendrick has two songs that I like. He has the song, this song right here called Love. And then he got the song called I Remember Swimming Pool Full of Liquor. I promise you guys, I've never listened to any Kendrick's album ever, ever. If you go listen to my, if you go look in my song play history, my playlist, my artists that I like the most, you would never see Kendrick in my my Serato, because I've never listened to his music. Drake is the only artist out of all of these artists that I've actually listened to the music. Because what you guys got to understand is hit records mean something to people like me. And when I say people like me, I mean people that got regular lives. We don't know any of these rappers. We don't have any ties to any of these rappers we just want to hear music and for drake when he dropped i listened not because i like drake more was because the songs were better what he was talking about was better this guy right here i didn't identify with anything that anybody that was marketing kendrick i didn't identify with none of it I wasn't from the West Coast. That's a big thing right there, too. West Coast, East Coast people, we, we live different lives. I wasn't from the West Coast. So I didn't listen to none of this album. I never heard Good Kid, Mad City. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I never heard none of these songs ever. I heard this song, Poetic Justice. That's the one, Poetic Justice. Put it in a song. All right. I heard that song before. Because Drake's on it. <laughs> and I just saw that just now. Let's see. I never heard any of these other songs before. I had to hear. Obviously, I heard the Swimming Pool song because that was a single. But I never went and listened to the, the album to Pimple Butterfly. I remember when this, when this album dropped. I wasn't interested in listening to this album. I, I couldn't tell you one song from this album. No knock to Kendrick. Just not my style. Uh, he did a, the Black Panther soundtrack. I don't care about a soundtrack. That's just what it is. Um, then he just dropped this new project. Or I guess he dropped this album called Damn. I remember when this dropped and he, 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 oh, you know what? I do know another song. I'm lying. I do know this song. He'd be like, shut up, bitch. Be humble. Shut up, bitch. Sit down. I like that song. And I like this song. So we got humble, we got love, and we got swimming pools. This is a career of a person over the last 10, however many years, and I know three songs. Uh, this one, his newest project, Mr. Morales and the Big Steppers, I promise you guys, I don't know 
one Kendrick song on this album. And this is not a knock to Kendrick. So it is what it is. You can be fire and all of those things, but you're not going to be able to drop music that everybody going to like. And I'm just not their target audience. But I will say something. Um, and I'm going to bring this up when I talk about the Drake beef with Kendrick. But uh, Kendrick Lamar is not for me. It is what it is. So, there was something that Drake said in his song that got me to thinking. When he said, uh, every time Kendrick Lamar drop, he better drop and give top 50. So, who is top? When we don't come back to Drake in a minute. Top dog. So this is top dog. Anthony Trice. Top dog is the person who owns top dog entertainment. If you guys know, Kendrick wanted to get off of his label. And so that was like the biggest thing when he dropped that Big Steppers album was that he was off his label. But if you guys scroll in the credits, you would see... He got PG Lang, which is his label. And then he has Top Dog, which is the label that the other guy owns. And then he has Aftermath, which is the label that uh, Dr. Dre owns. And then you got Interscope, which is the major label that they are signed to. So that means that Kendrick Lamar's pockets are being taxed bong, bong, bong three times before he even see a dime off of his music. And so if you guys know anything about the music business then you would know that when someone is taxing your pockets three times you're not really making that money much money off of your music and if you're not selling like a drake then you're definitely not profiting off the music and this right here mr morales and the big steppers he's not profiting off of this because he ain't crossing over like he thinks he crossing over and clearly the shows is not selling because drake already said like your shows is not selling out where you performing that big dog but yes, Kendrick is signed still to Top Dog, which is the label that SZA is signed to and a whole lot of other people. But he doesn't want to be signed to them anymore. But hey, I guess you can't get what you want. Anyways, it's kind of interesting to me that this guy is still getting percentages off of his music. That's wild. But anyways, let's talk about Drake. Drake versus everybody. That is the hottest topic right now on the internet because Drizzy Drake is the least liked rapper. And there's a there's probably a plenty of reasons why people don't like Drake. Uh, they say that he's sensitive, he's very arrogant. But what I would say is that for a rapper like Rick Ross to be coming at Drake, over some shit that got nothing to do with Rick Ross. I think it's very clout chasey. I think it's lame. And I think that the the tactic that everybody is using now to sell their music is lame. Everybody, everybody is dissing him because it's getting them attention. Most of these people that we're talking about, Rick Ross and Kendrick and whoever else, we wouldn't be talking about them unless they were standing next to Drake, for instance. I was never a Future fan until Future stood next to Drake. I was never a fan of Cole and still not a fan of Cole, but I hadn't listened to a Cole song since he dropped a song with Drake. And a lot of these guys don't realize that what they're doing is they're alienating themselves away from the person who has been instrumental in giving them a hit record when they needed a hit record. If you look... At these guys catalogs most of these guys when you type their names in let's go when you type their name in the songs they have with Drake are the songs that come up the first time so we got Rick Ross let's see who's in Rick Ross's top songs so clearly his song with Drake money in the grave Drake is on these songs stay scheming those are his top songs right there. Now, obviously, they're going to have Everyday Hustling because that song is the song that he's on, the future project, and everybody teamed up. But let's go to, let's go to Future. 
Now, Future is going to look a little skewed as well because he just dropped these songs. But let's go to the le next few songs that they got on here that's not that's outside of the album. See, Future, right now, you can't see any of his songs with Drake because these songs right here are more popular. But most of these guys, when you go to their pages, their songs with Drake. If anybody has a song with Drake, it is going to be in their top five on Spotify. Way Too Sexy. That has Drake on it. Let's just go to a different artist. Hmm, who got a Drake? Who got Drake features? Who got Drake features? They ain't had a Drake feature in years. And it's called the Drake Stimulus Package for a reason, you guys. Because Drake is literally injecting into the music economy. Every single time an artist needs a hit record, they go put Drake on the song, and the song is a hit record. And if I'm an artist in the industry, I'm a little hating about that. And if I ain't got no Drake hit record, or if I don't like Drake, and I want Drake to go, up, go away, and every time I turn the radio on, I see freaking Drake. I'm, I'm a bit upset about that. You know, niggas is haters. Niggas be haters in the low. And they can't take it when they see somebody just up, up, up for a really, really long time. So they just waiting to see him fail. And one thing about a hater, a hater will take all the favors from you. They'll take all the favors from you and they'll get you all, uh, they'll take everything they could possibly take from you. The moment that you stop giving to them, that's when they really show their true hate. Because now it's like, oh, I was only around you so I can get this. But now that I can't get this, I'm done with you. So it's just like, you got to be careful with these haters. But these, I have never ranked my favorite Drake albums in order. But if I had to, my favorite Drake album would be, Views would be the first one. That is my favorite Drake album. Uh, my second favorite Drake album would be Certified Lover Boy. CLB is my second favorite Drake album. My third favorite Drake album would be, let's see, let's see, not her loss. Um, oh, Scorpion. My third favorite would be Scorpion. Scorpion. So it would be, it would be Views. It would be Certified Lover Boy. It would be Scorpion. Uh, it would be, I want to say, Take Care. Take Care is my top. Uh, uh, let's see, what would it be? Take Care. Um, I wouldn't say, I would say nothing was the same. Nothing was the same. And then I'm not going to lie. If you're reading this, it's too late. If you're reading this, it's too late. That's, that'll definitely be one, be my top. So we're going to go. We're going to go. Uh, let's write these down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to go views. Hold on. Let's bring this up on the topic board. These are my top, top, top Drake projects. All right. So let's do. All right. Top Drake album. This is in order. Views. CLB. Certified Lover Boy. Scorpion. Ah, uh, Scorpion. Mm -mm, who else? I ain't like honestly, never mind. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm going to say, let's see, let's see, let's see. If you're reading this, it's too late. I really, really like that one. Nah, 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 nah. I ain't going to put that one in there. I ain't going to put that one in there. No, no, no. Yeah, definitely if you're reading this too late. If you... All right, if you're reading this, it's too late. All right, who else we got? Who else we got? I definitely fucks with it if you're reading this, it's too late. Um, um, I 
guess I'll go ahead and put take care. I'll put take care doing this. Take care. Take care was not my top. Like a lot of people really, really like take care as like they top, but it wasn't it wasn't my top. Like in take care. I feel like after the Drake I feel like after the meat beef, Drake came a little different. Like it was different. I'ma do her loss. I really like her loss. And the reason why I really like her loss, it had to grow on me because it was such a sad project. Like, you had to get in the mind state of like, oh, no, 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 not her loss. Hold on, no, no, no. No, no, no. Her, her loss is definitely not on my top. I hated that album. That's the one with, that's the one with, uh, what's his name? That's the one with 21 Savage. For all the dogs, yes, that's the one. So, this album is sad. It's a sad album. Uh, let's see, where are we going to rank the rest of them? So, let's do for all the dogs. Um, we got her loss. What else? What else? For all the dogs getting married. Come oh, and oh, honestly, never mind. So I think I need to go back and listen to honestly, never mind again. I think I didn't need to listen. I think I need to listen to. I think I'm definitely gonna listen to for all the dogs, her loss, and honestly. Never mind. All right. Let's see. So we got seven albums. How many albums Drake got? Nigga got so many albums. I'm not a fan of the Scary Hours projects. Laugh Now, Cry Later. I hate when he do any songs with DJ Khaled. Dark Lane demo tapes. Oh yeah, this is this is the project that he dropped, the Dark Lane demo tapes. I was not checking for this song on this project. I should go listen to that too. Let me go. Let me go put that on my Dark Lane. This is probably where he be throwing all his shots. Not Dark Lane demo tapes. What else we got? What else we got? What else we got? Oh, I actually hated More Life. Not even gonna lie to y'all. That was like not one of my favorite projects. But it's some fire, it's some real fire shit on it. I feel like, uh, I feel like More Life was like him trying to give a look to a whole bunch of other people that he was fucking with. Um, but yeah, More Life, there's some fire songs on More Life. Uh, what else? Views. Views was it though. Views was the one that he dropped right after the meat beef. That was that was it. What else? What else? Nothing was the same. I didn't like nothing was the same. No lie. I was not a fan of it. Nothing. I don't know what happened when he dropped this album. Um I feel like this project was I feel like this project was like I don't know I can't even describe what I felt when this project came out I feel like it was him I, I feel like it was him reveling in like okay I'm the man for real for real I feel like that's really where he was at with his nothing was the same like oh I'm finally the man and so, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, this album didn't really like sit right with not sit right. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't really get. I wasn't the man in twenty thirteen. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't doing my thing in twenty thirteen when this came out. I was like I said, I was a produce inspector, so I wasn't really on the like feeling it. I wasn't relating to it 
And that's one of the lines that Drake says in uh, in the song that he does with Jack Harlow. Like, his music is getting to the point where it's unrelatable. And it, in 2013, this album I was not able to relate to. Now I can more relate to Drake's music and stuff like that. But I 2013, I was like, on oh, some shit. I don't know. But this is literally my top Drake's albums in the, a list. Uh, so my top Drake album is always going to be Views. My second one is Certified Lover Boy. The next one is Scorpion. I probably got Scorpion over Certified Lover Boy. Yeah, I'm going to put Scorpion at two, Certified Lover Boy at three. And then I'm going to put, if you're reading this, is Too Late at four, Take Care at five. And then all the other ones is Honorable Mentions. Because I ain't really checking for, uh, I ain't really checking for the rest of them. But I'm going to go listen to them, though. I'm going to go listen to Her Loss. I'm going to go listen for the dog, for all the dogs. Uh... I'm going to go listen to Honestly Never Mind, and I'm just going to give y'all my intake on that. But this is what I feel about the Drake project, about the music. Drake's the hottest rapper on the goddamn planet. All these rappers is hating because they can't come up with a hit. And that's just how it be. It is what it is. All right, y'all, I'm about to wrap up this live stream. We are on the road to 5,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe right now. Hit the post notification bell so you get notified every single time I upload new content. I'm going to be going live. I'm going to be uploading new videos, and I'm going to be giving you guys a lot of content daily. So make sure you tap in. If you have any questions, comments, and concerns about the music business, Things of that nature. Make sure you reach out, man. Drop a comment in the comment section. Give me some inspiration to make some new music business videos. Because everybody know how to make their songs. Everybody know how to get their songs on, you know, Apple Music, Spotify. Everybody know how to register with BMI ASCAP. So what I want to do is I want to start creating some more in-depth videos for you guys. So you can really, really learn how to get paid, not played.